The final run to the strip before the end wasn't too interesting. Never once spotted Kowalski on the way back, which I'm not sure if that is more or less terrifying, as I kind of like knowing whereabouts he is before he smashes down a door and surprises me somewhere. My brother died at the Battle of Hoover Dam. You're desecrating a war memorial. Well, one crash and a load back later, and I decide that I'm going to take a safer path back to the Citadel that doesn't have me running through Death's Gauntlet. So I plan to basically go south back towards Vault 87 and Lamplight, then follow the same path I did earlier from Smith Casey's garage to the Citadel, as well as probably stopping off Megaton for some healing supplies. This journey was certainly safer, but no less... strange? It, it just works. On the way, I managed to capture this interaction with Wolfgang that I find far funnier than it actually was. This doesn't involve you. You stop waving that gun in my face, or it's gonna involve me. That's it. You're dead. Sure. Cross. With the boomers all sorted and done in record time, I figured it was best to now head out and get the hollow tapes, seeing how they wouldn't be trying to vaporize me anymore. Or at least that's what I thought, because when I went out, I got hit by another artillery shell. I had no idea what was happening, as I had literally maxed out their reputation. So, I'm just going to show you what happened. Yeah, so at some point, Victor must have started following me, I guess? It's a shame I didn't have the mic on while recording because I was laughing for nearly a minute straight when this happened. Now, I know what you're all thinking, but don't worry, I am one step ahead of you. You're welcome. In Fallout, there are many ways for the player to get better equipment. This can be done by looting areas of all their supplies, bartering with a traitor, or taking them by force by winning in a fair fight. Just to name a few. He congratulates me for my efforts and gives me the best task a soldier could ask for. I'm going to go assassinate the president. Uh, pl please don't use that clip out of context. Seeing how I would need to meet all the factions anyway, I started by heading off to Gamora and just letting the gang go to town on anything they see fit. You're all probably beginning to see how this playthrough is going to turn out, only my faction should be left standing by the end. Next on the chopping block was Benny and his henchmen. Nope. Next on the chopping block was Benny and his chairman. Frankly, they put up less of a fight than the Omertas. I'd say Benny's reaction to the situation is also pretty accurate. Benny probably did the most damage to me out of anything I faced so far, so good for him. That didn't mean a whole lot for him in the grand scheme of things, but hey, A for effort I suppose. I'm here to kill you and take what's inside your head. That you cannot have. I did manage to glitch the game out as I didn't do enough damage to kill him, but as you can see his health bar is empty and I can't lock onto him. Thankfully though, I just wait for him to go through one more attack cycle and one last hit finishes him off. I then celebrate my victory in the absolute best way possible. <laughs> With this weapon in hand, it was time to test it out, and I have the perfect guinea pig in mind. What the fuck are you doing? My brother died at the Battle of Hoover Dam. You're desecrating a war memorial. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. Oh, no, it's on. This is where the fun begins. For my special stats, I spread them out with a high focus on endurance and intelligence while draining luck and charisma. You would think that seeing how he was the president that I would give him a high charisma stat. But no, we are instead going to work for our high speech skill. That way, it is more impressive. As for the one point in luck... Well, I mean, he was assassinated after all. After that nightmare was over with, it was on to the final Scarecrow segment, which like the others is relatively simple.
After finally dealing with Scarecrow, all I have to do down here is slowly walk around gathering plants for 10 minutes or so. Rather than go straight on with the main quest, I thought it might be fun to do some of the companion's quests. You know, just to spice things up a bit. Just have a few swings at me so I can see your form. Don't worry, I can take it. To what do I owe the honor? Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> After rescuing Nick, the AI seemed to go brain dead as they can't seem to figure out that they should come down the stairs to help me fight the Triggerman. When they finally did follow me down, Nick was ready to engage in what could have been the longest close quarters shootout ever, but thankfully for once Preston had the right idea. When it came to Skinny Malone, I really didn't feel like sitting through his dialogue and went to walk out and leave, which then caused him to aggro and my followers to immediately enter kill mode. They wiped the floor with him and his goons in seconds. Kate even somehow decapitated him with a swing of the baseball bat. Now. As for Kellogg, there he is. Nice run. This worked flawlessly against all of the Praetorians, but then it occurred to me that Caesar himself was nowhere to be found. It didn't take long for him to reappear though, as he came back with a revengeance, as he now had a submachine gun. My only weakness. This would have been my undoing if Caesar didn't have to reload, and as such, one vat's attack was enough to put him in the dirt. This is of course a very special meal, so rather than eating it on the ground like some sort of savage, I clear the nearby table and enjoy the finest of dining. Before doing anything else, I head back to the pit and melt down all of the ammo I'd collected since I was last there, and to my surprise and joy, it allowed me to craft 275 more bullets. I may have also tried to melt down part of my brain, but that's neither here nor there. By this point, the capital wasteland itself is free of slavery. So, with that in mind, I'm going to go to the one place that is yet to feel the wrath of the Great Emancipator. SPACE! That said, rather than head straight there, I figured I would need some experience and levels, seeing how I'm not getting any despite the trail of bodies I've left in my wake. The closest and probably easiest quest I can think of is taking out the three major fiends for the NCR, so I go and do that very quickly. I start with Driver Pth, <laughs> who I honestly thought may have been the most annoying given his tendency to rush the player with his golf club. Luckily, him and his men were all grouped up inside the nearby ruins, so one bombing run was able to take them all out. As I then return the claw to Lucan, another idea comes into my head. One I have not had since my very first video. Vegetable soup. I thought we were having steamed clams. No, no, I said steam. My first task for the NCR is to get rid of the Great Cans. Now you may think that sounds a bit violent for Elvis, but I have a counter-argument. Did you know that Elvis was in fact part of the army for a time? Why is this important? Well, you see... Good soldiers follow orders. Baby, 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 baby. After a while, I decided that perhaps grinding wouldn't have been the worst idea in the world after all, and so I headed east of town to battle some trainers, and the absolute best thing happened. I figured that since I'm in the area, there are some people that I should really pay a visit to. What are we going to do? Considering I was more than able to pistol whip all the railroad to death in a previous Folly 4 video, it should probably come as no surprise that skewing them took no time at all. It was an awfully cathartic experience though, I'll give it that. I mentioned that running around the building seemed to mess with his pathing before, but it turns out just standing inside the building by this window just completely breaks it, as he just stands there not moving or attacking, allowing me to hit him through the window with no risk. Well, I say no risk, but he did hit me once for some reason. But I had enough health that I managed to survive it, but then I just reset myself behind the window again and then repeated the process until he was dead. Sometimes the best weapons are not those of steel, but those of cheese. The first part inside wasn't too tasking either, turns out when you have a dozen crazy men with swords and sledgehammers by you per said, anything is possible. I need to go back to school. Once more, keeping up with the variety in this questline, my next quest is a bounty from Ulfric Stormcock? Oh god. After watching the demonstration, it's off to continue on my plotted course, where I briefly get distracted by this king, who may have mixed up Elvis Presley and Michael Jackson. 
I then sell all of the guns looted from the Omertas and Chairman for a stupid amount of money, which I then turn into stim packs, before deciding now was a good time to save the game and check if they were still following me. Luckily, they were, and when they pulled me out of the menu, they were standing back to back, and for some reason, all I could think of was this. As expected, he does indeed follow, and at an alarming rate, I might add. That's all well and good, but I need to make sure that he could actually leave the building, so I ventured outside, and after murdering the grandma gang, waited, and waited, and waited. I was beginning to lose hope that he would ever find his way out of the building, but then, just as I was about to head back inside... <laughs> With nothing to lose and zero ideas, it was off to New Vegas. The trip there was rather uneventful, other than when I shoved a man's head in the box because my girlfriend thought it would be, and I quote, good for the video. <coughs> when we got outside, I took a very wrong turn and within 10 seconds got my legs crippled, shot by a turret, and then blown up by a car bomb. If you know anything about where I am from, then you will know that that last one hits pretty close to home. I then mark the nukes, report my success to Ingram, get shouted at by Maxon, and then continue the trend of lying to Halen in these runs. All right, I'll hear him out. 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 I was at this fight for so long that around the eighth death, I had to turn the game off and come back to it the next day. In the end, I had to reset this fight thirteen times. Do you know how annoying it was to see that same cutscene that many times? Because for some reason, the game wouldn't let me skip it. I told you to go to your cell. When we get upstairs, we find out the Joker is dead. <laughs> but not really, and that we get knocked out by Harley. Aww. I'm sure a smarter person can make a joke about the irony of Batman being knocked out with a bat, but I am not that person. Sadly, this forces us into the next Catwoman section. I have no problems with their gameplay, it's how the story kinda just stops during these segments, and it really hurts what is otherwise a good pace to the story. Regardless, the section is pretty short, we just have to go get some catnip from Catwoman's apartment and then head over to... Poison Ivy! I told you to go to your cell. Anyway, after some reckless driving it doesn't take long to stop the car, get some info and break a few bones. We then follow up on said information and rather than finding Scarecrow we find... Poison Ivy! I told you to go to your cell. From this point on there is really no rhyme or reason as to why I did the things in the order that I did. I was kind of just like a hyperactive ping pong ball flying back and forth across the Mojave just liberating people as I saw fit. As it's something I tend to do in most of my playthroughs, even if I don't mention it, I was going to make my way for Novak and help out Boon with his whole deceased wife problem. Wouldn't you know it though, on the way I came across my third band of Legion Assassins. As I am getting stronger with every slave freed, and they seem to be on par with their original versions, I am able to wipe their filth from the wasteland without breaking a sweat. With that in mind, it's back to Tenpenny Tar first, to not only buy ammo from Gustavo, as after the slaver purge of Pittsburgh I am running low on bullets, but also, because after talking with Mei Wong in Rivet City, we learned that she used to be a slave of Alistair Tenpenny. So... With Tenpenny now headless and part of the sidewalk, I head north to free the slaves at Evergreen Mills. Now it is time for Abraham Lincoln fact number one. Did you know that Abraham Lincoln would personally test fire rifles outside of the White House? With that in mind, when it comes time to use the BB gun, I'd say it would make sense that he would test it out in the nearby Railroach. Why am I taking unarmed, you may ask? Well, if you don't know the answer to that, then I believe it's already time for Abraham Lincoln fact number two. Did you know as a young man, Lincoln was quite a successful wrestler, defeated only once in roughly 300 matches? So with that knowledge, I'd say he would make for quite a deadly hand-to-hand -hand combatant. I also killed a few Brahmin on the way, almost as a form of revenge for Lincoln's mother. Why is that, you may ask? Well, I think it's about time for Abraham Lincoln fact number three. Did you know in 1818, Lincoln's mother died of a milk sickness that swept across Indiana? It turned out that the milk had come from a cow that had ingested some poisonous snake root. With that in mind, I'd say it makes sense to kill any and all Brahmin that I come across. I then take it back to Abraham Washington for safekeeping, and with that, complete Lincoln's journey in the capital wasteland. That said, I hear the Mojave has a problem with slavery, so maybe we should go check that out. A few moments later. Well, this is a bit of a sticky situation, but you know what might ease the tension? That's right, it's time for Abraham Lincoln fact number four. Did you know John Wilkes' brother Edmund Booth once saved Lincoln? As per usual, I made sure to get some worthwhile experience by killing the Bark Scorpions at Hidden Valley. They proved no match for the President's hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. On the topic of Lincoln's punching prowess, I think we are long overdue for Abraham Lincoln fact number 5. I mentioned before about how Lincoln was a wrestler in his youth and was even inducted into the Wrestling Hall of Fame. Well, did you know that good old Abe may also have been the inventor of the choke slam, as a lot of accounts point to him being the very first person to use the technique. All that remains was to protect President Kimball, and I won't lie, there was a temptation to let him be killed, as how else am I going to become the president? 
But no, saving Kimball was the right thing to do because as Lincoln knows, his bodyguards probably can't be trusted to protect him. What am I getting at here? Well, I think it's time for Abraham Lincoln fact number six. The night that Lincoln was assassinated at the theatre, his bodyguard, John Parker, was absent as he left his post to go to the saloon next door, where none other than John Wilkes Booth was drinking. It is said to this day, no one knows exactly where Parker was when Lincoln was killed. Fallout New Vegas is a good game. Now that I had technically done all of the story up to this point, apart from speaking with Dr. Lee that is, all that was left was to head to the old faded garage to enter the roleplay server, and then from there, instantly radio pitcher gnome pitcher cinder block gnome soda my way out of there. I killed a few ants before deciding it wasn't worth the effort and began to leave when who should I spot but the devil himself. Not today, Brian. Getting past the normal guards is straightforward enough by this point, it's when we make it to the commandant's chambers that things get a bit dicey. With this key we can now enter the mirror room and once we clear the ghost we get access to our first upgrade. A flamethrower! <laughs> when I get the cell down our main focus is for the rocket hideout, for the self scope of course. Now you're probably wondering, well what about Erica's grass gym? There is your answer. I had to tag along behind the Arbiter until we got to the Warthog as I can't hit the Sentinels, whereas he can destroy them in like two or three shots. The Warthog run was no real different than it would be in any other normal run. <laughs> Stealth not being my strong suit meant I would need to contend with more Elven Sith Lords, but honestly, that's alright. It's fun to just go on killing sprees from time to time without a care in the world. It's even more fun in situations like this, where you can argue it's for the greater good as well. Despite what I just said about stealth, I was able to get a successful stealth death blow off of one of the guards in the prison area. Hello there. With my new surplus of ammo, I figure now is as good a time as any to try and fight the death clone Concord. Should have seen that coming. First things first, I give Piper some actual armor, and then I send her off for her very first combat experience. Yeah, things certainly could have gone better, I will admit. Once Prime lobs his explosive chicken egg into the hole, we run in and begin the destruction. I pretty much just murder all the sense in the main area by myself, and then I get greeted by a glorious sight when going to open the way to the reactor. Not sure why he's floating, but it has been a while since I've seen a visual bug, so it's par for the course at this stage, honestly. I meet up with Victor again, who seems to be doing much better after his ordeal with the boomers. I decide to correct that mistake and furiously beat him into the ground. This is not the smartest idea I've ever had, as it means I've completely lost the element of surprise in the house, but I'm sure I'll manage. Inside, I am immediately attacked by two more Securitrons and... Victor! How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Howdy, partner! Regardless, I stick with the kitten and manage to come up with a character I'm proud of. This is... it's green. Well, with all the GCPD stuff out of the way, we can make our way back to the plot and figure out exactly what happened to Black Mask. <laughs> it's Two-Face. The rocks don't hold them off for long, however, and in perhaps the most shocking scene of the game, the Batmobile is killed. When Doc Mitchell asks me for my name, I decide to type it out just how I believe Leatherface would. Perfect. I am on the strip. I have many guns. I am Nurbit. There are Omertas nearby. You know what that means. I decided my first stop though would be to Gamora to get to know the Omertas. Now, completing this quest does give me the opportunity to confront the Omerta's higher-ups and start the whole quest, 
But I have a better idea when it comes to them. Can you guess what it is? What have you done? Well, that was a very fun and worthwhile experience. Benny and House are of course my primary concerns on this trip, but let's not kid ourselves here. It's a weapon restricted run, and I just got access to a suit of armor that makes me laugh at small arms fire. You know what that means, it's time for a good old Nurbit murder montage in Gamora. I'm hoping it goes something like this. But if I'm honest, it's more likely going to be something like this. Now I just need to get info on Vault 87 so I can... Wait, Vault 76? As in, Fallout 76? <laughs> One soldier with a ripper was brave enough to fight me head on, and... Well... What? Nice, nice. Further on in my journey south, I was attacked by some golden geckos. Naturally, they would not pose an issue, but after I killed the first one, his friend just began to look down at the ground and sulk away. This might be the first time I've ever felt genuinely sad about my actions in a Fallout game. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. On the way to our regularly scheduled international incident, some of the Legion soldiers with ballistic fists may have proven dangerous if I hadn't gotten the scribe counter from Veronica, so thanks for that. Sorry about your family though. Now, as I mentioned at the very beginning, I had maxed out my speech so that I could fight the leg at one on one, and that is exactly what I did. It was a very grueling fight. For every punch I landed, he hit me with his sword, and seeing how it does damage over time, I had to make sure to keep myself. With the last of the crabs pummeled into dust, I make it to the heart and I just crush it with my bare hands. Okay, so considering I was dead set on helping the Institute by this point, there was no real reason to keep the railroad alive. Like, at all. So I moseyed on over to the Old Norse Church, and now I- I think it's time for Jack to let her rip. Thankfully Regis, his right hand man, comes out and says pretty clearly that if he was in charge, he would support the NCR. With this information I contact the Colonel, who likes the idea so much she promotes me to political assassin and tasks me with taking out the big cheese. Wolves weren't the only thing that impeded my journey to the Greybeards, I also happened upon an Orcish drug dealer. Naturally, I purchased all of their skooma as it's a quick and easy way to restore stamina, and then the two of us got into a fight where I emerged as Victor as they seemed to suddenly die of a heart attack. Sarge being a mess on the floor, I constructed the cannon, and the monkeys now have artillery. I repeat, the monkeys now have artillery. With that in mind, I head all the way back to Vault 111, lay down a bunch of landmines in the circle around me, followed by all of my equipment except a single plasma grenade. And then, that was it. Regardless, that's going to be on this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like and you're interested in more challenges in the future. Feel free to subscribe to one of these videos every week. My name is Nervous. I see everyone. I'll see you all in the next video.